Hello and welcome to today's physics class brought to you by O3 Schools Jam app. The only app you require while studying for your jam. And um, on installing this app in your Android devices or your Windows PC, you shall require an activation key in order to gain access to the full features that this app has to offer. And the cost for your activation key is simply 2,500 Naira only. And once you follow the steps within the app, you shall be able to use your app completely. Um, payment for this app guarantees instant activation of your app. So there's no need to worry about that part. So once you pay, get your app and we can get started with this tutorial. Um, in this class, we shall be studying electric circuits. And um, on the electric circuits, we shall be paying special respect to your resistors. And let's begin. Now, what is an electric circuit? A circuit is simply the part provided for the flow of electric current. Now, your current doesn't just happen to jump from one place to another. No, they have to pass through your wires. And so, an electric circuit is simply a measurement of, you may say, wires and all the necessary things. So, this current can flow as and how it is required. Therefore, your circuit doesn't contain only resistors. No, there are other things involved. There are capacitors, inductors, transformers, um, real stats, ammeters, voltmeters, a whole lot of things going through the circuit. And um, one key thing we shall learn is that when using these circuits, we don't just draw wires in the typical way you see them. If you look at the wires in your house, they are usually scattered. We do not draw our wires for our circuits in that manner. Instead, in circuits, they are simplified uh, to give us ease of drawing and understanding. And instead of drawing the complete feature of a particular electronic device, we can use different symbols to represent them. For example, a resistor is simply represented with this. That's all we used to represent a resistor. Um, if you go through all that years of your past questions, you might see resistors also represented with this. So that's that for the resistor um, or for your capacitor. A capacitor is represented simply with this. Your cell or your battery is represented with something similar to the capacitor, but one is longer than the other. Um, even your AC source, which is what we call our Nepalite in Nigeria, is simply in this form, this is that this is AC. This is getting from your cell or your battery is DC. Then um, there are other things you could represent an ammeter. An ammeter is simply like this. Um, there's also your voltmeter, pretty much the same as your ammeter, but now we have V and even a galvanometer. Also quite similar, but we have a G. Then there's a transformer. And um, this is your transformer. Then um, we could also have what we refer to as crossed wires. What if a wire wants to pass another wire? We don't just draw them cut nature that no. Instead, we draw something like this. Now, once you see this in a circuit, this implies that this wire passes where this wire is, but they are not connected together. If it was drawn like this, then this would be a junction at which this wire, this wire, this wire, and this wire are all connected and meeting. However, this tells us that these wires do not have any joints or any connections between them and even if they do 
it doesn't exist at this point in the circuit. So there are so many things. There's even a real start or a variable resistor. This is simply a resistor whose value can be alternated. A good, um, a good way to picture that is in the controls for your ceiling fan or standing fan. You are able to increase or decrease the speed of these fans by moving your switch. All you are simply doing is that you are varying the resistance and as a result, you are varying the amount of current getting into the fan and as such, the speed can vary as well. So these are several of the elements we shall see inside the electric circuits. But for now, we shall pay special attention to the resistor. And the reason for this attention to the resistor comes from one of the fundamental basic laws in physics, which is Ohm's law. So we shall be studying Ohm's law. However, to fully understand what this law is telling us, there are a few elements we need to understand first. So we should start by looking at current. What is electric current? Now, contrary to what a lot of us think, current is not something you can see or touch. What passes through your wires are charges, not current. Current is simply a measure of how fast these charges are moving. Current is the number of charges passing through a wire per second. So while current is not something tangible, charges are. So current is the charges per second. Current can be measured with an ammeter. Current is measured with an ammeter. And the unit of electric current is ampere. So ammeter is the instrument to measure, while ampere is the SI unit or current. Now, the next thing we shall look at is voltage. Voltage is the driving force for electric current. For current to flow, something has to make this current move from one point to another. Now, that necessary agent for the movement of this current is what we then refer to as voltage. Voltage is measured with a voltmeter and its unit is volts. So just like before, voltmeter is the instrument while volts is the SI unit. However, to get the formula for voltage, remember that voltage therefore is simply the work done in moving a unit charge. Therefore, voltage goes to work done over charge. So current is charged over time, voltage is work done over charge. Now, in the analysis of voltage, however, there are two ways voltage is studied. One of them is potential difference. There is potential difference, and this is often called PD. And then there is electromotive force. Electromotive force, and it is commonly called EMF. Now, the potential difference is the work done in moving a unit charge from a point within the circuit to another point. While electromotive force, on the other hand, is well done in moving that unit positive charge in, from infinity to a point in the circuit. That means electromotive force takes that charge pretty much around the circuit. The shell difference simply tells us the difference between a certain point and another point in that circuit, difference between their potentials. So, however, both of them can be generally referred to as voltage. So, commonly, they are used interchangeably. But in analysis of cells or batteries, electromotive force is usually the rating for the battery when it is not in use as a whole, 
But when it is in use, we commonly get voltage or potential difference out of it. But that's topic from that time. Right now, we're focusing on just this basic knowledge that we can analyze voltage in terms of both potential difference and electromotive force. So this is my first base. And once we note this, we can then actually move forward and study Ohm's law. Now Ohm's law is quite simple and it can be stated very simply. Ohm's law states that the current flowing through a metallic conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference across its ends provided temperature and other physical factors remain constant. The current flowing through said conductor or any metallic conductor is proportional to the potential difference across the ends of that conductor provided that temperature and other physical factors remain constant. So V proportional to I. And then from our knowledge of mathematics, we must introduce a constant. Or this constant in this case is referred to as R. And R is the resistance. So V is voltage. I is current. While R is the resistance. And resistance simply is the opposition to the flow of electric current. And the device whose job it is simply to provide resistance is referred to as a resistor. The unit of resistance is ohms. Ohms in words for its symbol is your omega. So a resistor is a device whose job it is to provide resistance and this is our formula for ohm's law now if we want to get resistance from a resistor what are then the factors that can affect the resistance of this resistor now there are about four factors that affect it the first of which is the length of the resistor and all we must know about this is that the greater the length the greater the resistance, the shorter the length, the shorter the resistance. That's a direct variation. Then two, we also have the cross-sectional area of that resistor. And for this, it's an inverse relationship, indicating that the bigger the area, the smaller the resistance, and the smaller the area, the bigger the resistance. Now, typically, most wires come in cylindrical forms. They are usually tiny cylinders, which means that the cross section is usually a circular cross section. And therefore, in those situations, the area is given as pi r squared or pi d squared over 4. That's for the area. Then the third thing that can affect is temperature. Now, the behavior with temperature differs for different types of materials, for metals or your semi-metals. But generally, resistance decreases with temperature. That means resistance decreases with increase in temperature and increases with decrease in temperature. While last but not least, number four is the nature of the material. What this simply means is that if I should take several samples of different materials of the same length, the same positional area, all at the same temperature, they still shall not have the same resistance. There's an intrinsic property to every single material that determines its level of resistance. Generally, we refer to them in terms of conductors and insulators. Conductors are those materials that let electricity pass through easily. Why insulators are those which do not let electricity pass through easily? Please keep in mind, insulators eventually do let the electricity pass through, but it is not easy. The voltage required for electricity to pass through most insulators is very, very high. But they are not to be confused and called non-conductors. 
the term non-conductor seems to imply that electricity can never pass through, which is simply not true. It is simply very difficult. So, combining all these into one formula, we can then say that resistance of any material equals the resistivity times the length over the area of that material. This resistivity here is gotten based on the nature of the material. That means different materials made of different things each have their own separate resistivities. Okay, so that is that for the basic pro property of your resistor. However, these resistors in circuits can also be connected in more than one way. What if I want to combine different resistors? That brings us right back to both the series and the parallel connection. Now, please keep in mind, a series connection can still be identified for the fact that they are connected head to tail. It doesn't have to be straight. All you have to notice that you have a single wire connecting one resistor on that resistor and on that wire connecting that resistor to the next resistor. A parallel connection, on the other hand, implies that all the wires coming out from one side of the resistor or the resistors are taken together and the wires coming from the other side of the resistors are taken together, which means a series connection can look like this. See, a wire connecting this and this, a wire connecting this and this. On the other hand, for a parallel connection, we could now have something like this. And all three of them would then join at the setting point, while all three would also be joined. So as you can see, this is a parallel connection. They all come to join from a certain point and join. When it's risk connection, just single wire joining them. And as such, based on this, the analysis then differs. If I call this arrow one, arrow two, and arrow three, it must be noted that in a series connection, the current is the same. Current is same, while voltage is shared. Current is the same, while voltage is shared. But in a parallel connection, current is shared. Current gets shared, while voltage is the same. Therefore, how can I analyze this? Based because the voltage is getting shared, it means each of them are going to have their own individual voltage. V1, the voltage in the first resistor, will be current, which is the same for all, times R1. V2 will be I times R2. Then V3 will be I times R3. While over here, voltage is what is the same. Therefore, I1 will be V over R1, I2 will be V over R2, I3 will be V over R3. Next up, with a bit of proving which we do not truly need for the purposes of our jam, we must then know that the total resistance in this circuit will be R1 plus R2 plus R3. While in this case, it will be 1 over ROT equals to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. And these are the different formulas for resistors in series and in parallel. Okay, then once this is noted, the next thing we must then look at is electrical energy and electrical power energy and power electrical energy is easily analyzed for every single system the electrical energy being generated the energy can be given as e equals to q v 
because energy goes to work if you recall and charge is going to be current times time times voltage so energy is equal to itv but then also from ohm's law v equals to ir so that will be ir it here first of all times v which is going to be ir i times i is i squared r root t so that's one formula this is another formula and then there's a third one which is that energy equals to v squared c over r so any of these will help you get your energy while for power power is always simply equals to energy over time and therefore power shall be equals to divided by time here c goes away iv divided by time i squared r and again divided by time v squared over r the unit for energy is joules but the unit for power is watts but it should be noted that when calculating the cost of electricity um electricity generated to the houses is only measured in terms of kilowatt hour not joules to get it in kilowatt hour all you have to do is convert your power from watts into kilowatts and then multiply by the time in hours that will give you how much energy you've consumed in kilowatt hour and then you can multiply that by whatever rate is given to you in the question and with that i believe we can now move on to our o3 schools jump app from which to sort out several questions having to do with this topic and we can solve and analyze so let's get at our apps remember your app has to be activated to enjoy this range of features our first question will come from 1995 question 34 the year 1995 question number 34 and this question simply states that an electric current of 2 ampere and my current i equals to 2 ampere flows in a heating coil of resistance 50 ohms resistance is 50 ohms for 3 minutes 20 seconds and the time is 3 minutes 20 seconds we have to find the heat produced now all you have to remember is we're looking for energy right now and we don't solve our part for energy with our time in minutes that's a go to seconds so how do i convert this to seconds that becomes three times 60 plus this 20 three times 60 is going to be 180 seconds plus 20 seconds and that is 200 seconds now to get my energy i have about four formulas for energy i simply have to find one that makes use of i r and t and if you can recall that formula is given by i squared r t so my i is 2 squared my r is 50 and t is 200 i remember we have to get our answers in our calculator so if you open your calculator 2 squared is 4 4 times 50 times 200 and that gives you 40,000 joules but if you take a look at your options I just got 40,000 there all my answers are expressed in kilojoules so I simply have to divide by 1,000 these three three zeros take care of these three zeros my energy is going to be 40 kilojoules and that is all i hope there's no problem with that so we can move on to a second question still using our old three schools jump up we're looking at 2002 question number 31 and in this question we have a circuit I'm going to draw the circuit so we can analyze together. My circuit there's a resistor on this side, two ohms, connected to these two resistors. One is X, 
and the other is 3 ohms connected to your 1.5 ohms out here all connected to a voltage of 12 volts and we are told that the current is 2 ampere we are told from the diagram above determine the value of the resistance x now from a certain point of view this might seem complicated but in reality all you have to do is to find this value of x now how can we find the value of x i know my voltage i know the current passing through the circuit now what this tells me is that v equals to i arrow from ohm's law and that if i'm able to find this resistance i would know what this overall resistance ought to give me that means r equals v over i and v is 12 i is 2 that gives me 6 ohms that means if i combine all these resistances together i should be getting a resistance of 6 ohms next up this is what type of connection this is a combination of both series and parallel connections these two are parallel to one another but in series with the entire combination that means that if i can reduce these two to a single resistor which i may call a then i will have that two a and 1.5 would all be in series as i'm aware for a series connection arrow t equals to arrow one plus arrow two plus arrow three therefore i know that my total resistance is six you can take arrow one as our first one that's two arrow two is this unknown a and arrow three is 1.5 so now give me that six equals to two plus 1.5 is 3.5 plus a take 3.5 the other way a equals to 6 minus 3.5 so a equals 2.5 ohms and keep in mind we're not yet done what we now know however do is that this resistance and this in parallel when i combine them i should be getting a value of 2.5 and as you are aware for parallel resistances i formulate that one over arrow t plus the one over arrow one was one over r2 i terminate my formula there because i have just two resistances i'm dealing with now i know that my total should be 2.5 and that my first resistance up there is three so i want to find this one x collect items one over x equals one over 2.5 minus one over three now was the LCM of 2.5 and 3? That may seem a little bit confusing. In that case, all you simply have to do is multiply them together. 3 times 2.5. Then if you divide by this, 2.5 cancels 2.5, you are left with 3. And divide by this, 3 cancels 3, you are left with 2.5. So 1 over x shall be 0 0.5 over... 3 times 2.5 and if you press that in your calculator you get 7.5 so my sort both sides x shall be 7.5 over 0 0.5 and if you divide that using your calculator 7.5 divided by 2.5 or rather 0 0.5 gives you 15 ohms and that is our answer, option D. As you can see, the steps are quite simple. Understand your basics and apply your steps. All right? Go to 2001, question number 32. Still making use of our O3 schools jump up. 2001, question number 32. In this case, again, we have a circuit, and we are simply told that in the diagram above, our current is what? 
Now, to get the current, as you are aware, we are given the voltage as 6. Now, to get that current, we simply need to find out my total resistance. And if you look at it, we are having two resistances plus uh, two other resistances in parallel. Your 1 ohm and your 3 ohms are both in series. And on the other hand, the 10 and 5 are in parallel. So if I can combine everything together, I have to first of all combine that parallel combination. So I can say for parallel, which I know is 10 and 5, 1 over R will be 1 over 10 plus 1 over 5. And my LCM for 10 and 5 is 10. 10 into 10 is 1. 10 into 5 is 2. So that will give me 3 over 10. And when I sum out, R equals 10 over 3. Give me 3.33 ohms. And now I know that those two combined will give me 3.33. Then everything becomes a series connection. I have a series connection. I'll be R1 plus R2 plus R3. So that will be my 1 ohm plus 3 ohms plus 3.33. 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 plus 3.33 is 7.33 ohms. However, if you take a good look at your options, you realize that that doesn't seem to appear in my options. So, whatever can we do then all you have to remember is we are looking for current not resistance do not panic and try to stop here just because you saw this and you're like oh no i'm done always make sure you run your questions with a logical conclusion the only thing you must spot right now though is that in your options everything is in fraction form but we express this our resistance in decimal and if i was to continue like this I may not get the same answer appearing as it is in the options. So what do I do? It means I must come back here and decide that I'm going to leave my answer as 10 over 3 ohms and not put it in decimal form. Which means when I come back here, I will have, as before, 1 plus 3, but now plus 10 over 3 over 1 over 1. If I take LCM, that will be 3. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. Yeah, 3 into 3 gives me 1, so I have 10 up there. 3 plus 9, 12. 3 plus 10, 22 over 3 ohms. See, now I have my answer in fractions, so I can proceed. To get my current, remember, we will give a current all along. I'll be voltage over resistance. My voltage from my circuit is 6 volts. Over means divide. And my resistance is 22 over 3. That gives me 6. Using your knowledge of mathematics, division turns to times. And this guy turns around. So that becomes 3 over 22. 2 into 6 is 3. 20 to 22, 11. And then 3 times 3 is 9 over 11 ampere. And as you can see, that is my answer as shown in option A. Can you see? Simple analysis, and you can get your answer. Let's move on. 1995, question 31 on your 03 schools jump up. The year is 1995. The question is number 31. This one says, if a resistance is halved in value, that means initially, let's say the resistance was arrow. So let's increase the lighting. Initially, arrow 1 was arrow. Then it gets halved. That means now it's going to be arrow over 2. I hope that's okay. Then, the potential difference is tripled. That means initially, potential difference could have been V, but then it gets tripled, and tripled means times 3. So that will be 3V. We are told to find the ratio of the new current to the old current. 
Now, all I have to tell myself is old current I1 will be V1 over R1, which is V1 is V, R1 is R. But my new current I2 will be V2 over R2. My V2 is 3V and my R2 is R over 2. And all you have to remember is that this over here means divide. So 3V divided by R over 2. And then using the knowledge of mathematics, that means 3V times 2 over R, which is 6V over R. And therefore, the ratio of the new current to the old one, that means I2 over I1. My new current is 6V over R. Over means divide by my old current I1, which is V over R. So I'll be 6V over R times R over V. R cancels R, V cancels V. And that gives me that I2 over I1 must be 6 over 1, which is the same thing as saying 6 ratio 1. And that is option D. So as you can see, when you get a question, try to write down your parameters and analyze carefully. Don't skip any step and you shall invariably be able to obtain your answer. Okay, let's try a fifth question. I shall collect this question from the year 2004, number 45, using your O3 Schools Jam app. Okay, this question now states, in the diagram above, the ratio of the electric power dissipated in the 6 ohms and 3 ohms respect resistors respectively is. We have a 6 ohm and a 3 ohm resistor, as you can see on your Jam app there. And these resistors are in parallel with one another. What we want to find is the ratio of electric power. Now, um, there are several ways to go through this. All I have to look for is a way to express the power in terms of resistance. And as I'm aware, power equals to V squared over R. Is that great? Yeah. So, for the first one, I can say the power in the first one, P1, equals to, my V is obviously 12, because in a parallel circuit, they share voltage. So that will be 12 squared over, for my first resistor, I'm going with 6, over 6. That will be 144, which is 12 squared, over 6. And if you were to divide that using your calculator, as you can see on your jam app, you get... 24 watts. Then for the second resistor, your voltage remains 12, so 12 squared, while this resistor is 3 ohms. So 144 over 3. And this gives you 48 watts. So that means the ratio of the power in the 6 ohms to the 3 ohms. This is my 6, this is my 3. So P1 over P2 will be 24 over 48. 24 into 24 is 1. 24 into 48 is 2. So my answer is 1 ratio 2. Option B. So you see, these questions are actually quite easy. You just have to go one more time, step by step. And um, at this point, I would like to remind us of a very, very basic fundamental rule, which often occurs in some questions, which is that if you connect two resistors in parallel, the resistance you get will always be less than the initial resistors which are combined. While if you connect two resistors in series, the total resistance is always greater than the initial resistance. If I'm to connect, let's say, 2 ohms and 4 ohms in series, I get a bigger value, which is 6. If I'm to connect 2 ohms and 4 ohms in parallel, then I'll get a value which is smaller than both 2 and 4. 
that's how resistances work such that if you look at the question in 2003 question number 30 where we are simply told if we are to connect another resistor in parallel to the first resistor existing if i connect another resistor to the initial resistor that was there what happens to my current as you are aware current is simply using ohm's law i equals to v over r the smaller my denominator the bigger my current and the bigger my denominator the smaller the current and now i know that if i'm to add another resistor to this if i'm to add another resistor in parallel then my total resistance will decrease and my total resistance decreases then my current increases see so the option becomes c it will increase because the effective resistance will decrease see so that's one of the simple questions we have to know how to analyze then um moving on 1995 question number 35 with your old three schools jump up 1995 question 35 if the maximum voltage across a 100 ohms resistor is 20 volts the maximum voltage is called that the v max across 800 ohms resistor is 20 volts we have to calculate the maximum power it can dissipate you have to remember power equals to v squared over r see quite simple my v is 20 squared over r which is 100 20 squared means 20 times 20 and that is 400 over 100 zeros cancel zeros and that is 4 watts see option b very 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 simple and i think we shall solve one last question and we shall be able to see that we've done a complete and thorough analysis of resistors in electric circuits okay and now this our last question comes from the year 2001 question number 25 2001 question 25 taking a look at your three schools drum up you can see we have a simple circuit diagram and we are told that the ammeter reads the current of three ampere when r is five and it reads the current of 6 ampere when arrow is 2. We have to determine the value of x. Now, before we do any analysis, we must first of all understand that my two resistors, R and x, are parallel to one another. And that for any parallel combination, 1 over arrow total must be 1 over arrow 1, taking my arrow 1 as arrow, plus 1 over arrow 2, taking arrow 2 as x. So, 1 over arrow t becomes LCM of arrow and x is arrow x, arrow x over arrow x, arrow x over x, arrow. Now, turning both sides around, arrow t becomes simply arrow x over x plus arrow. That means I have a simple way to determine my resistance given any single value of arrow and x now for my question what i know is that i get the current of three when arrow becomes six and i know that my voltage or emf e equals to i r now i don't know the value of e but i know that i becomes a value of three when arrow becomes a value of five so e equals to three when this my arrow becomes five then arrow c becomes five x over x plus five and e is also equal to i again but my new value of i is six ampere when arrow becomes two that is two x over x plus five now you see e equals this and yet e also equals this 
indicating therefore that this and this must be equal. So all I have to simply do is note that 3 into 5x over x plus 5 is equal to 6 into 2x over x plus 2. That was almost a mistake. Please be careful. Here's x plus 2 because r is now 2. So, open my brackets. 3 times 5x is 15x over x plus 5. 6 times 2x is 12x all over x plus 2. Now, um, if I cross multiply, this gives me 15x into x plus 2 equals to 12x into x plus 5. x can cancel out x. 3 into 12 gives me 4. And 3 into 15 gives me 5. For easy analysis. So open your brackets. 5 times x, 5x. 5 times 2, 10. 4 times x, 4x. And 4 times 5, 20. And when I collect like terms, 5x minus 4x equals 20 minus 10. 5x minus 4x is x. And 20 minus 10 is 10. So therefore, the value of x is 10 ohms. And on that note, we've come again to the end of another class. I want to thank you very much for listening. And please remember, like, subscribe. For more videos teaching you various topics in physics and other subjects as well. Also, get your O3 Schools Jam app, activate, and get the best learning experience. My name is Athanasius. Thank you for watching.